Hello, uh, today I want to talk about uh, explaining Greenplum in five minutes. So if you've got five minutes, I uh, should be able to give you some um, idea of what Greenplum database is. There is an assumption that you know what a database is. Uh, Greenplum is a SQL database. Um, it is designed for a, a data warehouse. Uh, it is what we call an MPP database, multi-processing. The idea with a, a with Greenplum is that it's very good at taking large queries um, and handing you back information very quickly. So that's really the whole idea. Is that there was an issue with the older style of databases where they can't answer back very fast with large queries. So um, let's go to the next slide. So. A single, the first databases were single uh, threaded databases, basically. Um, you have users, they talk to the database instance. I don't know if you, hopefully you can see my mouse. Um, so you have all these users, they run queries on the database, and then there's a direct, direct disk hooked to that instance. So when it's hooked to that instance, so basically you run the query, the database scans the data into the instance, in a single threaded and then it pushes it back out well that's fine if you have very little data what if you have a lot of data let's say you're trying to uh, you're trying to search uh, a terabyte of information okay well what about 10 terabytes now we have warehouses with petabytes of information and they must be able to do that so if this was 10 terabytes to suck 10 terabytes across this one thread and try to actually do any inform you, you'd never get finished. It, you couldn't suck enough data across the single link to actually, even if you had a good filter on it, it would still take a long time to get the data into the instance and then manipulate it and filter it and join it and whatever else it needs to do before it passes it back to the users. So this was very limited as far as size. This is only good to about um, well, honestly, about 10 terabytes, um, and that's not assuming it's not all in one table. So Oracle came up with this idea of parallel, a parallel instance, parallel Oracle. Um, what, what Oracle did was they said, well, let's remove the disk away from the instance. We'll have this data shared disk out here. And it, that shared disk will be connected to three separate instances that actually share workload. So you have the users out here, and users actually issue a query. And the one part that's not in this picture is the uh, uh, load balancer. So when the users issue a query, it, it goes to one of three instances, whichever one is the least busy. So at that point, you have three instances that will work in parallel, but they still have to rely on the same shared disk. Okay, so that's okay if you have a lot of complicated uh, al algorithms, um, a lot of, of mathematics, uh, analytics. Uh, it's okay in certain ways. The problem is, again, if you have a lot of data, this will be your bottleneck. That bottleneck between the disk and the instance. Okay, we we're talking about actually having the data outside of the actual system. Okay, so this is network. In, in the IT industry, what is the fastest uh, part of a enterprise? Usually it's the CPU. Okay, CPU is the fastest. Uh, the next level down is the memory. Then the next level down is disk. What is the slowest part of an enterprise, usually? That would be a network, okay? So you've just taken your disk or your data away from your databases across the slowest piece of your enterprise. So that's one issue if you have a lot of large queries. This, again, this is only good to about 10 terabytes, maybe a little bit bigger than that. But if you're scanning a lot of data, this just, it, it couldn't keep up. Um, so this was good, it, actually, if you have OLTP database or a transactional database, because transactions are not a lot of data, but they are, uh, they do need a lot of computing power. So this added computing power, but not speed in scanning data. 
Okay, this is the architecture of Greenplum. Um, there's a, several other ones too. Terry Data, uh, Natiza, although I don't believe Natiza is hardly being made anymore. I think it pretty much went under. But you have Terry Data, you've got uh, Greenplum, you've also got something called Postgres XL. Um, that is a open source, but it's not. I, last time I looked at that, which was, to be honest, a couple of years ago, wasn't quite there. So, what what does this do for you? You see uh, many, many different instances. Instead of three, we've got, in this case, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So, thirteen instances, right? So, we have a master, and we have these things called segments. Uh, think of it as a master-slave idea. So, how do we get speed out of this? This looks really complicated. Well, really, it's actually very simple. All of these segment instances are actually copies of each other as far as structure. The data only lives in one of these segment instances. Okay, so there's shared nothing data here, basically. So, well, the best way to explain how fast it, or how it works is, Again, you've got the users. They're going to issue a query on the master. The master controls everything, hence the name master. The master will create a query plan and then in parallel broadcast it to all segments at one time. Because it is shared nothing data, all your data is distributing evenly, or should be evenly, amongst every segment. So, in this case, we have a segment host, there's two segments, and they have local disk. Local disk is the best way to go because you're not going across a network. You've eliminated that network issue. So, what's going to happen is on seg this segment and this segment, each little segment, uh, there's 13 hosts times two, that's uh, 26 segments, okay? So, <clears throat> that same query that it was figured out, the query plan here, will run in parallel on all 20, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, yeah, 26 segments. So what's going to happen is it's going to, the, so in, for instance, this is segment one. Segment one will look through its portion of the data and then send the result, the partial result set back to the master. Well, guess what this segment's going to do back here? Same thing. It's going to run that exact same query on its portion of the data, which is a different portion of data than this segment, and then it will pass its partial results set back to the master. When the master retrieves a partial result set or an answer saying no rows or something, so it gets an answer from every one of its segments, the master will then collate all of the partial result sets into a singular larger result set do it whatever post processing needs to be happened like order by um, uh, an average wh whatever it needs to do to post process that data and then pass the data back to the users now that seems really complicated but if you think about it what we've done is in instead of having one instance we've got uh, 26 instances so in 26 instances each segment is doing 1 26th of the work in parallel. So technically, it should be 26 times faster than a singular instance. Okay, now there is overhead, so it doesn't end up being 26. Uh, it, it's probably closer, you lose about 30%, so maybe 20 times faster. That's still pretty good. If, if you were taking 20 seconds for a query, now you're taking one second. Okay, so that's basically how it gets the speed. Is it breaks your your work up into many uh, different uh, processes. So the the idea of many hands make light work. Well, this is many hands in parallel making light work. Okay, so what each one? Okay, this all of. Uh, all of these segments, uh, in fact, Greenplum in general, is actually designed around Postgres. So what Greenplum is, is many modified Postgres instances working together. Okay, so each one of these 
the, including the master, is a modified Postgres instance. And they all work together. Now, if you notice, I didn't say that the master looked at anything. There is no data except for the uh, catalog information on the master. The master really has no user data. All the user data is in the, all the segments. Okay. Now, when I, I did mention about them being evenly distributed. All right. So let's go to the next one. Distribution. How do you know for sure whether your data is going to be evenly distributed? Okay. So let's consider the this right here. Um, you, here's my data going in my columns A, B, and C, A, B, and C. And here's my data going in. To, to distribute your data, you have three different choices. You can choose not to make a distribution key, and it, one will be chosen for you. It'll be the first column in your table. That's usually not a good idea because that might not be the best distribution key. The best distribution key is one that's unique. Okay, that what that means, what it, the key is, the values in that column decide where that row goes. So let me show you how this works. So here's our data. Um, it really shouldn't see key A, this, and that, that's incorrect right there. But this is the data going in, and I'll show you how it works. So let's go to the next line. Distribution A. So let's say that column A is our distribution key. So what it's going to do is put in 139. Well, column A is 1. It runs that value through hash algorithm, and it puts that row on wherever that hash algorithm tells it. Okay, now that hash algorithm is a consistent hash algorithm. What it means is the same value will go to the same segment. So 139, the number 1 goes to the hash algorithm, and it puts it 139. Next one, 028. So 0 is the key, and 0 goes to segment 3. So 0, 0, 2, 8. Okay. The next one, 137. Well, again, it's consistent. The same value goes to the same segment. So 137, 137. And then uh, 186, 186. And then 135. I'm sorry, 035. 035, uh, 154, 154. You, you notice the pattern here. 132, 132, 021, 021. Okay, now you notice a problem here. Segment 2 and segment 4 are empty. So what that means is segment 1 and segment 3 are actually doing all the work. Okay. And again, notice that this, that none of the data went in the MDW. It has a table. It has the same structure. There's no data in it. But there's also no data in segment two and segment four. So two or half of your instance is not working. So what that means is your, your query is going to be twice as long because you have uneven distribution. You have data skew. So you have too many rows in segment one and not enough rows in segment two, okay? So you don't want to pick something that has a, a few values. In this case, this was a, uh, a basically binary number, zero, one, ones on column A. That's a terrible choice for distribution key. You want something that's unique. Okay, well, what's unique in here? As much a unique, as unique as you can get it, um, or random, either way. So the most unique one is C. Well, let's see what happens if we did it by C. So if we chose C as the distribution key, you're using this key now, not the one you're using the 9. Okay. So 9 goes here, 139. And then uh, 028. Okay. 028. And uh, 137. And 7 is key. 137. Um, now, it, it, this, I actually did sort of a round robin distribution. It would be more random than this because of the hash algorithm. But it was an easy way to show you what I'm talking about, even distribution. So if it's fully distinct, you'll get an even distribution across all segments. 
Okay. Now, in this case, because I had more rows than I had segments, one of them gets an extra row. Okay. But the thing is, if you were to do a query, all of your segments are actually now evenly distributed and going to share an equal amount of the workload. Okay. And again, nothing landed on the MDW or the master. Okay. Here, all of the data lands in the segments. Okay, so this would be called the even distribution, no data skew. Now we'll talk a lot more about skew and performance and all that later, but uh, hopefully this helps you understand a little bit about the parallel or MPP style of data or database or data warehouse. What's a hierarchy? This is actually a hierarchy is inherited from Postgres. Again, all of these are modified Postgres instances. So this this is very similar to Postgres. Um, okay, at the very top you have the green plum array. Within that array you have databases. Um, the very first ones when you first install it is Postgres template zero, template one. Those always stay there. Uh, in this case, let's say you don't want to put any data in them because when you when you create a new database, it takes template one and copies it. So the last thing you want to do is modify that. Postgres holds a lot of the catalog information. You don't want to touch that. The So you're going to want to make your own database. So here we make our own database, my database. Then we're going to have schemas in there. You have some PG catalog schemas, uh, information schema, GP toolkit schema, public, uh, PG toast, PG AOSEG. These are all schemas that are already there. And a schema is much like what you think it is. It's a collection of objects so that you can easily uh, control permissions based off the schema. All right, so again, you don't want to put anything in these schemas. And the last thing you want to do is build things in public. So now you're going to actually um, create your own schema, my schema. And inside that schema, you're going to have your own objects, my table, my view, my sequence, so whatever objects you've built. Now, I mentioned earlier that roles are actually what uh, is in Greenblum. There are no users. Everything is a role. You've got uh, user roles and you've got group roles, but the only difference is how they're used. Group roles are not, you don't have login privilege on a group role. Uh, user roles have a password set and you do have login. So it, it comes with GP admin. GP admin is the main user. Um, the it's a super user basically can do anything it owns the whole database um, so user role is going to have login and will be assigned some group role a group role will have permissions on objects and usage on schemas but will not have login okay so the user role must be added to that pghbay.com file that I mentioned earlier. That is in the user data directory. If you don't know where that is, uh, look at my video on the, where the files are. And default to the instance. Again, GP admin is already defaulted. It always is there. So, um, that's really the, the end of my five minute tutorial which probably was actually closer to seven or eight minutes um, if you have any questions uh, put them in the comments below and thank you for watching